Namaste everyone. I am Shiva Malok. Welcome to my channel. Today, I am going to discuss about a very important planet, which I think we as an astrologers uh, ignore. And that is Mercury. You know, the mind is very important. And before you predict about a horoscope, or before you predict for a person, it is essential that you understand how the mind of the person works. Because this mind decides how they think, what they like, what they dislike, what they prefer, what they don't prefer, right? So until and unless you understand that, it is very, very difficult to make a prediction. More so in those areas where life is more dependent on the personal uh, aspect, as in marriage, choices, and other things, this becomes very important. But the thing is, we look at moon, and that's right, moon signifies the mind, but intelligence comes through Mercury. And as grown-up people, rather than going by our mind that, that we generally do when taking an impulsive decision, well-thought decisions are took with respect to Mercury. I think two weeks ago, uh, last to last to last Sunday, in my newsletter, I discussed about the importance of Mercury. And now in this video, we are going to explore many more uh, aspects of Mercury. The first thing that you need to understand is that Mercury indicates our mind, intellect, and the thinking pattern. So say if uh, Mercury is in a movable sign, that is Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn, such people don't think for long, don't think continuously. Generally, I have seen they don't think at all. Though they may try to or behave like that they are thinking, actually they are not thinking. They take quick impulsive decisions without thinking. And this is what leads to a wrong decision in their life, point one. Point two with Mercury in a movable sign, generally such people cannot uh, you know, focus on a single thought or focus on a single idea. They keep on discussing about uh, different, different ideas, different, different things, not being able to focus on something particular, which leads them to making a wrong decision. This, they should avoid. People having Mercury in the fixed Rashis, that is Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius, these people constantly think. Like constant thinking is an attribute of a movable sign, not of a fixed sign. But the problem with fixed sign is once they get an idea or a thought, it is stuck into their mind and they become so engrossed in that idea, in that thought, in that thinking, that they start looking everything with the same aspect. And because of this particular reason, at one point of time, they may not be able to focus on different uh, areas. They may not be able to have a different streams of thinking, which actually, is a disturbance in their personal life, is a disturbance in their family life, and specifically a disturbance when it comes to behavior, right? They, are, they generally have an idea, they generally have a thought and get lost in it. People having uh, Mercury in dual signs, Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces, it is good. They have, uh, you know, they have a balance, important things. They think for a while, 
non important things they just you know quickly discard this is the best position for mercury right that you give equal uh, you give more importance to things that are important and ignore things which are not important this is uh, very good so mercury in dual signs are better oh, sorry mercury in dual sign is better as compared to mercury in a movable sign and a fixed sign problem with mercury in movable sign is they are thinking a lot and not able to focus on a particular area whereas mercury in fixed rashi uh, makes that one is constantly thinking on the same topic not able to decide or discriminate when to stop <clears throat> right most importantly in the case of match making because two people are going to live together it is important that you match their mercury people having mercury in a dual sign can be matched with anyone right as they have equal balance of uh, contemplation and decision whereas those having mercury in a movable sign should be matched with someone who have mercury in a movable sign and those having mercury in a fixed rashi should be matched with someone who have mercury in a fixed rashi now added to that as we have learned that uh, mercury indicates the intelligence it is also very important to check in which house mercury is situated in which rashi mercury is situated in and that generally indicates the area which one thinks most about and as this indicates the area that one thinks most about it also gives us a hint on what the person is focusing maximum what is the maximum focus on the person and where he wants to lead his life right so you say that mercury is in the 10th house or mercury is in the sign capricorn then in that scenario one is constantly thinking about their profession social status name fame recognition and the lineage they belong to, right these are the things signified by the 10th house capricorn doesn't indicate these many things but capricorn only indicates professional life the ability to sustain make a name and generally giving and uh, you know staying afloat your competition these things are indicated by capricorn so basically capricorn and 10th house they are not synonymous they have few things in common and few things that are entirely different now the basic point is <clears throat> because mercury indicates where your focus is it is important like if you are dealing with the rashi you have to see the rashi lord if you are looking at it like a house you have to see the significator of the house ascendant is signified by sun second house is signified by jupiter third house is signified by mars fourth house by moon Fifth house by Jupiter again. Sixth house by Mars. Seventh house Venus. Eighth house Saturn. Ninth house Jupiter again. Tenth house Mercury itself. Eleventh house Jupiter and twelfth house Saturn. Right. Regarding the signs, you know that Aries and Scorpio is lauded by Mars. Taurus and Libra is lauded by Venus. Gemini and Virgo is lauded by Mercury. Leo is ruled by Sun. Cancer is ruled by Moon. capricorn aquarius is ruled by saturn and uh, sagittarius and pisces is ruled by jupiter right that we know it is very essential that the significator of the house where mercury is situated and the lord of the rashi where mercury is situated should be very strong in horoscope or considerably strong at least for the person to have a satisfied and contented life because what happens suppose you have mercury in capricorn and the lord of capricorn that is saturn is not strong or at least affliction free in the horoscope then in that scenario what happens the person will constantly think about things related to capricorn that is as i told you staying afloat from competition professional life name fame status right and uh, like about family and if the lord is not powerful though one will be uh highly focused in these areas he cannot achieve much in these areas which is a dissatisfaction factor and as the person grows in age you know as they cross their 30s and 40s in life 
when they start realizing that i may not be able to uh, i may not be able to you know achieve those things that i always wanted it gives a sense of dissatisfaction and makes the person lose their confidence and also in, the, in their interest in living right which also indicates that if the rashi lord or the significator of the house where mercury is situated if it is weak it also gives suicidal tendencies and suicidal thoughts to the person who have this thing uh, this particular a uh, combination in their horoscope that is the first point right so for satisfaction in life it is important that the rashi lord and the significator of the house where mercury is situated should be fairly strong now let, let's discriminate right this this is my specific point whenever i teach in my courses i have this very subtle thing you know discrimination that uh, you know i told you uh, the rashi lord of uh, mercury as well as the significant of the house where mercury is situated both should be strong but what is the uh, difference the rashi lord of mercury decides the actual result that is happening and the significant of the house of mercury indicates the happiness satisfaction or contentment that you are deriving out of for an example say mercury is in the fifth house in the sign of libra now mercury in the fifth house in the sign of libra the person is focused on their children's education research the intellectual uh, contributions they make to the society and along with this they are also focused on marriage relationships partnerships and business right when venus is powerful one will be able to do significantly good or fulfill their wishes and desires regarding these areas where he is focusing and when venus is weak he may not be able to do that point one now suppose venus is powerful but the significator of the fifth house that is jupiter that is weak now in the case where venus is powerful but the significator is weak what will happen is the native though will be able to achieve all the things that he want but he will not be satisfied and his desire to achieve more and more will grow higher and higher as he keeps on achieving one thing after another right understand this better let's take an example in this horoscope mercury is situated in the ninth house in his own sign virgo right and uh, because mercury is situated in his own sign virgo and that mercury is around 22 degrees it is in his own rashi this mercury is in the ninth house and the significator of the ninth house is jupiter which goes to the 11th house in scorpio becoming virgo uttam right scorpio in the rashi and scorpio in the navamsha this means that the person is focused on their luck their fortune and luck and fortune actually see uh, when i say the person is focused on their luck how do you understand what the person is focused at he is focused at that like you know uh, ninth house like if you have to understand luck understand it at its reward right so because this mercury is in the ninth house the person is reward focused his focus will be that okay if i am doing this much hard work what reward or what return i am getting and because it is the ninth house they need more reward right as compared to the hard work that they do eight thousand indicate i am doing 80 hard work i should get 80 result nine thousand indicate i should i am doing 80 hard work i should get 120 result. right so this is what they are focused at are they getting the result Uh, sorry is he getting the result mercury is in his own rashi 
planet in his own rashi is considered powerful so yes he is getting that is he satisfied or does he want more for that we have to see the significant the significant of the ninth house is jupiter that is vargottam so yes he is getting the result as he wants and he is also satisfied so there is a sense of satisfaction in his life as well now <clears throat> coming to navamsha this mercury goes to cancer and this cancer is in the uh, is falling in the 7th house of the natal chart right as you can see now what will this 7th house indicate is what we have to understand we have understood that the sign of mercury indicates what the person wants to achieve right this is uh, signified by both the house and the rashi as well in this case because this mercury is in virgo which is the own sign for mercury now what does virgo indicate virgo is lauded by mercury virgo indicate the same thing that mercury indicate simple right now mercury is a business man right mercury deals with commerce mercury deals with intelligence knowledge logic and all these things right so the same things are indicated by our goals this is in the ninth house person mercury is in the ninth house in the sign of virgo person wants to become and stay lucky from the ninth house in the matters of business commerce education coming from virgo he is getting both the result because the rashi lord of mercury which is mercury itself is powerful as well as the significator of the house jupiter is also powerful but why do he want to do this what is the motivation that motivation comes through the navamsha rashi of mercury the navamsha rashi and also the house which is signified by that navamsha rashi when you take it back to the divan chart so coming to the horoscope again this mercury <clears throat> is in uh, here is navamsha this mercury is in cancer navamsha and this cancer navamsha comes to the seventh house seventh house indicate the society see lagna is you and seventh house is what is not you others this mercury comes to the seventh house goes to the sign of cancer so he want to become fortunate he want to have the luck and support of good fortune in the matters of business commerce and education to show it to the society the prime motivation is showing his worth to the society and what it gives him the moon is in the sign of sorry the mercury is in the sign of moon this gives him mental satisfaction mental kick mental drive this is why he wants to do that this way i'm just uh, giving you one example i'm not giving you more than one example it is it will take a lot of time right i am just making you understand the formula and i am sure that you will be able to apply it on other uh, horoscopes as well right this is how you are supposed to analyze the mind of the person what he wants what he desires will he have it and this is very important if one is supposed to be satisfied if one wants to become satisfied in life and only and remember only when the person is satisfied they will be calm and only when satisfaction is there the person will be able to <clears throat> live their life happily with content and everything will be there right without satisfaction in life every day every moment every time living with dissatisfaction is a curse what i personally believe in now taking it further because mercury indicate your mind 
it is very essential for a good marital life that the thing that mercury demands in your horoscope should be met by a spouse also so say you have mercury in capricorn conjoined with venus and mars also check navamsha don't forget navamsha now this mercury to remain satisfied happy and contented because mercury indicates the mind because this moon is in capricorn conjoined with venus and mars venus mars and saturn the lord of the sign capricorn should have a connection with the ascendant of the spouse if these planets have a connection with the ascendant of the spouse the spouse will have these qualities qualities related to venus mars and saturn and because the spouse is having these qualities and you have your mercury influenced by these planets you will be actually satisfied happy and contented with that with the spouse which in turn will lead you to a good marriage happy marriage contented marriage and satisfied marriage i think this point is also okay now going further as see uh, from any planet the second house the 12th house the 6th house and the 8th house from that planet is not good 6th house and 8th house and 12th house you already know why second house is not good because if a planet is in the second house like say there is venus in second house from uh, mercury then looking from venus mercury comes in the 12th house right so because second house also contributes in the 212 connection the position of planet at the second house is also not considered good as per my experience another point is houses 3 and 11 11 because uh, when a planet is in third from a planet obviously the second planet is in the 11th from it or when a planet is in 11th from the planet the first planet is in third from it right third house indicate hardship so third house and 11th house is good but not right from the start right so there is some hardship there are some challenges you need to have patience to get the result now understand that point 2 12 6 8 three, 11 are the difficult houses taking mercury which is the kark of intelligence check the planets which are situated in 2 12 6 8 3 11 houses from mercury in the matters related to those planet if you want to succeed then you will have to have an intellectual compromise that means you cannot do things are signified by those planets the way you want to do it you have to change your thought you have to change your thinking process and you have to change a whole lot of things to achieve success say for an example venus is in the second house from mercury marriage is signified by venus say this venus is the 10th uh, lord so now it also signifies profession don't forget to take the signification of the house which is lorded by the card now say venus which is the significator of marriage and the significator of the 10th house goes to second house from mercury or goes to 12th house from mercury or goes to 6th house from mercury or goes to 8th house from mercury in that scenario to succeed in the professional life 
to have professional satisfaction and content, to have a good marriage, to succeed in marital life, you will have to compromise with your intellect, ideas, and thoughts. And after a considerable change in your thinking pattern, thought process, and what you expect, and how do you wish to uh, deal with it? Only after a significant change in these matters, you can expect good results to come. This is a lesson that uh, we need to understand. The same goes with the case of third house and the 11th house also. But in the case of third house and 11th house from Mercury, I will say that a complete change of thoughts and ideas are not needed. But patience is needed. The person can continue to have the thoughts and ideas that they have. And things will also work the way they want or wish. But they have to wait for it. Am I very clear? Uh, I think so. That there should be no uh, confusion regarding it. Okay. Say in this chart, take, take this chart. In this chart itself, the Jupiter is in the third house from Mercury. Jupiter indicates the child. This person, whatever he thinks about what is good parenting, how parenting should be done, etc. Employing those ideas with his own child may not be a good option for him in the starting. Applying his ideas and thoughts may not prove him a good uh, father in the starting, but with time, because it is 311 connection, his ideas, thoughts, and thinking about how a father should be will actually start giving him results. On the other hand, take Mars, which is the lord of the fourth house and indicates sibling. That is having a 212 connection with Mercury. His approach of how you should deal with your brother, what should be the relationship between two siblings, and his concept of home, property, vehicle, happiness, and comfort, he will need to change, learn through multiple experiences and failures. If he actually wants to excel in these relationships, if he actually wants to remain contented and satisfied with these things, otherwise his method of thinking may not lead him to prosperity. Say for example, this Mars is the fourth Lord, which indicates fecal. Now the person may have a thought that one should have very expensive vehicle only. It is uh, like, you know, if you purchase a vehicle which is not costly, it will not suit your person. It will not suit your personality and it will not lead you to satisfaction. Suppose this is the approach of the person. Now the person will work according to his own approach and will try to do the same thing, right? Purchasing expensive vehicles and uh, having them, maintaining them, driving them for the sake of keeping his personality. Two, three, four, five years down the lane, he will realize that this approach of himself is not good. It is costing him much money and giving him trouble rather than satisfaction. And he will have to change his thought that no, having an expensive vehicle is not the thing, but having the vehicle which suits you 
is the thing. If you have more of a city drive, you should consider having a sedan rather than having a um, uh, rather than having an SUV which doesn't suit you. Just because you want to be in an SUV, you want to sit higher on the road, investing in SUV is not a good decision. So he will have to change his thought idea and these things, right? This is a point. Another point is because this Mars is 212 to Mercury. It is not supporting Mercury. See planets which are in Kendra 14710 from the planet. And planet which are in Trikonas 159 from the planet support the planet. Whereas those planets which are in other houses than the houses I have mentioned, the other houses will be second house, third house, sixth house, eighth house, eleventh house, and twelfth house, as I already told you. Planet in these houses doesn't support the planet. So if you have any planet situated in second house, third house, sixth house, eighth house, eleventh house, and twelfth house from Mercury, because Mercury indicates your mind, intelligence, thought, and specifically the calculative ability. In the Dasha Antar Dasha of those planets which are situated in these houses from Mercury, your life may not go the way you expect it or have calculated it or thought it to go. Certainly in these periods, one should be ready for surprises and challenges and should avoid doing things based on calculations, the assumed notion and intuition as it can be very uh, problematic. Say uh, someone wants to get married and they are going through the dasha of a planet which is situated in sixth house from Mercury. So rather than thinking that I have a good relationship with this person, I have been in uh, you know six, seven year long relationship. This person we have been dating, so uh, we understand each other well. Our relationship should go fine, so we should get married. Rather than thinking this way, because the Mahadasha and Tardasha Lord is situated in the sixth house from Mercury, which tells me that your calculations are not going to go the way you want them to go. Means that you should uh, reconsider about the relationship, not get uh, influenced by what have been happened before and uh, should rethink about the relationship, your compatibility, likes, dislikes, thoughts, etc. once again with a neutral mind and should uh, rather get an astrological consultation before getting married because of expectations, thoughts, calculations, and presumptions are probably going to deceive you. All right? So that was it. Uh, I think I have discussed you many aspects of how to see Mercury as a factor of mind and intelligence. Uh, the result can be uh, like, you know, the result can be expanded to the prashna and to the transit as well. Uh, say a planet, sun, is going in the 12th house from your Mercury. Suppose you have your uh, natal Mercury in Taurus and right now sun is going into Aries. In that scenario, uh, because uh, suppose sun is the fourth lord with you in your horoscope and sun indicates authority, right? So if you think that, you know, I should purchase this property right now, it will give good result. And sun, which is your fourth lord, is transiting wealth from your mercury right now. You should not do that. Stop. Because your calculations and presumptions about the valuation of the property may be wrong. And this may not be the right time to make a decision because an intelligence right now is not supporting you. Wait for sun to start transiting in good houses from Mercury, then rethink about the decision and take it. Okay. And the point is, suppose you see a Prashna chat, someone asks you about a relationship. You see that Venus is situated in second house from Mercury. 
and the person is asking that sir i love my girlfriend a lot she also loves me and she also wants to get married to me what do you think should we talk to our parents because Mer mercury and venus are having a two tailed relationship in the prashna chart you should tell them that no don't assume talk to the lady directly that if she is interested in getting married to you and then ask the prashna right don't assume that she wants to get married to you it can be that you had a good relationship but she thinks that you are not a good person to marry or this is not the right time to marry any such thing can happen and your pre assumptions pre conceived notions your calculations and your forecast may be wrong because mercury the card of intelligence is not supporting the plan right this particular way it can be uh, expanded in almost all the areas of astrology which i think uh, you people will be able to do very easily now as we have explained uh, many dimensions of it right thank you for watching the video have a good